So today's Bible reading is John chapter 13 and verses 18 to 30. I'm not referring to all of you, I know those I have chosen, but this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. I'm telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. Very truly I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, Very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another, at a loss to know which one of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, What you are about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. Morning, everyone. Um, let me pray, and then we'll look at that passage of scripture together. Our theme for today is it's all about trust. Let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, as we come to your word now this morning, uh, we are mindful that uh, speaking about trust, or at least the lack of trust, will raise um, deep emotion within our hearts for perhaps most of us. And so we want to pray that your Holy Spirit will protect our hearts this morning as we talk about trust and betrayal and as we look Heavenly Father to your Son who is trustworthy please as we look at your scripture as we hear it and as I speak may your spirit convict our hearts and minds so that we might respond if need be in repentance and faith and we pray this in jesus name amen about trust um, there's a few lines from a song that i'm not going to sing to you that i'm just going to recite um, the title of the song is why uh, it's not by michael jackson um, it's by michael card and it goes like this why did it have to be a friend who chose to betray the Lord? And why did he use a kiss to show them that's not what a kiss is for? Only a friend can betray a friend. A stranger has nothing to gain. And only a friend comes close enough to ever cause so much pain. It's a great song, isn't it? There's great truth in that statement. Great truth in those lines. The truth that only a friend comes close enough to ever cause so much pain. That's what happens when trust is broken. And if, I imagine if you've lived long enough you've experienced that in your life you've experienced betrayal you've experienced broken trust and the tragedy of it is is that trust comes from sadly those who are closest to you and when that kind of trust is broken when that kind of betrayal happens 
it tears your world upside down, doesn't it? It, it makes you feel so broken. It makes you feel like you cannot go on. It's one thing for strangers to break your trust. It's one thing for people who are your enemies to break your trust. In a sense, you can cope with that. But the nearest and dearest, those who are closest to you, those who've expressed concern and love for you, those who have made covenant promises to you, when they break your trust, it cuts so deep, doesn't it? And it doesn't just happen in our personal lives. It can happen in all sorts of situations. For me, I think the most tragic of those situations is when it happens in the life of the church. When it happens in caring, loving, Christ-centered communities. When that kind of trust is lost or broken it's just like, it's a whole nother level, isn't it? Because at that level, it operates on a spiritual level. Not just a deeply personal level. It's a kind of spiritual level that kind of numbs you and me. And the damage, the potential damage it causes ripples out not only into the church life, but into the wider community. I don't have to remind you of those moments of broken trust within the life of the church. Do I? Do I just spell them out for you? In this last year, we've seen so much of that. We've seen so much of betrayal, broken trust, even in the life of the church and by church leaders. That has a deep spiritual impact, doesn't it? Kind of leans to you and me losing direction, losing purpose. It's real. I've experienced it firsthand. You're not yet to hear my sad story, so I won't tell it. But when personal trust is broken, when you entrust your children to other church people and they abuse that trust, It's soul-destroying. In John Gospel, in John chapter 13, we are confronted by the ultimate betrayal. The ultimate betrayal of Judas. Judas, who's an insider. Judas, who is one of the twelve. Judas, who spent three years with Jesus. I mean, if, if I had three years of you, right, I could make little swannies. How cool would that be? <laughs> Hundreds of little swannies. Anyway, mini-me's. And I only say that because I'm a big fella. <clears throat> anyway, uh, can you imagine what could be done if you could invest in someone else's life for three years? If they walked with you, if they talked with you, if they ate with you, if they lived with you, could you imagine what an impact you could have on someone's life if they were your disciple, if they were the insiders? Jesus chose 12. And of those 12, here is Judas, 
who was completely an insider, who walked with Jesus, talked with Jesus, ate with Jesus, lived with Jesus. He had every opportunity to know this Jesus. Throughout the Gospels, you and I are reminded time and time again, Jesus asking his disciples, who do people say I am? Who do you say I am? And time and time again, Judas would have seen Jesus' signs, his wonders, his miracles, his compassion, his generosity, his kindness. He, they would have imbibed it, lived it, just breathed Jesus. They would have understood who Jesus was, is. Even our little kids this morning from Matthew's gospel were confronted with who Jesus is. The man that walks on water, the son of the living God. That's the point, isn't it? Everything Jesus did was to point his disciples and the rest of the world to who he is. The Messiah. God who'd come to earth to make his dwelling among us. God who shows what his heart is like. Slow to anger and abounding in love. Judas was not asleep. Judas was not off doing something else. Judas was right there. One of the twelve. And he betrays Jesus. How devastating. Here's what I want you to see from this betrayal. Is that though Jesus is God, right? Jesus understands perfectly what you go through in life. Jesus understands and experiences what betrayal is like as you and I have experienced in everyday life. You see it? In verse 21, Paul, uh, John records, after he had said this, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and he testified, very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. There's very seldom where, where it is recorded that Jesus is troubled in spirit. Very seldom. And here is one of those occasions where Jesus is aware of the temptation and it's not pleasing. He is not happy. He is not joyful. He is not just get over it. He is troubled in his spirit. Have you been troubled in your spirit by betrayal? Jesus knows how you feel. He knows what it's like. He's experienced it himself. Do you notice how the trouble... <laughs> The, the sense of troubled in his spirit leads to him desiring just to get it done. Just get it over and done with. See that? In verse 27, so Jesus said to him, what you're about to do, do quickly. Just get it done already, Judas. You are the betrayer. I am troubled in my spirit. Just get it done. Do it already. Can you feel the emotion of it? Have you thought about this? That by Jesus announcing this, by Jesus giving opportunity for this, by Jesus knowing that this betrayal is about to take place, 
and by Jesus in his power and authority, in a sense, give him permission for this to happen. None of us, it's so different, isn't it? None of us, none of us would give any friend, loved one, permission to betray us, would we? No. But Jesus does. And as a result of this, he will start a process that Jesus knows will lead to his arrest, that Jesus knows will lead to his beatings, that Jesus knows will ultimately lead to the cross. Did you get your head around that? How deep is this betrayal? So whatever you've been through, whatever broken trust you're learning to deal with or cope with, Someone else might not understand, but Jesus understands. Jesus knows and knows deeply what you've been through or what you are going through. But it's not just about Jesus knowing of the pain of betrayal. It's about what Jesus is teaching his disciples as they learn to live with betrayal. And this is what is so much needed, in, not only in your personal life, but in our church life. Because when you are betrayed in your personal life, it's hard to trust again, right? What happens is, the pain is so deep that we become cynical. That we will never love another woman. That we will never love another man. That we will never love another family member. We will not put ourselves in that position again for our trust to be broken. And worse still, we are so sometimes caught up within betrayal and broken trust that we cannot see a way forward. We are paralyzed. It's into that situation that Jesus speaks. What's at stake? What's at stake is the progress of the gospel. What's at stake is the mission to the world. That's what's at stake. Here are these 12 men together in a room, and one of them is about to betray Jesus, send him to the cross, and for the rest of the disciples to disperse. And what do you think they are thinking or going through? They're thinking and going through this kind of sense of, how did this happen? How did we get here? What does the future hold? Our Savior, who we declared the Messiah, is stuck on a tree. And here's what Jesus says to his disciples. Look with me. I'm not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. John chapter 6, verse 70. Jesus speaking to his disciples, he says to them, I have chosen you, but one of you, right in the beginning, one of you is a devil. What does that tell you? It tells you despite what is going on, Jesus knows. He knows absolutely everything. Everything is organized and preordained and in God's plan and in the plan of Jesus, even this betrayal. Jesus is saying to his disciples, take courage, take heart, I've got this. I've got every situation under control. I know that one of you will betray me. I know who it is who will betray me. And you see the conversation? Peter sort of shapes up to John and says, John, ask him, who is it? Who is it? And John 
asked Jesus, who's going to betray you? And Jesus tells him, the one that's going to, that I hand this food that I've dipped into this, uh, the bread that I've dipped into this paste and hand it to them, he's the one. Jesus knows absolutely everything about the situation. It's not as if Jesus is out of control or the situation is out of control. Isn't that how you and I feel when we are betrayed? Like things are out of control. And Jesus is saying to his disciples, this is important. Betrayal will happen. But do not lose heart. I've got this. I know what's going on. Why do I believe this is the object lesson that Jesus is teaching his disciples? Well, notice what follows. Jesus says in verse 19, I'm telling you now before it happens, so that when it happens, you will believe that I am who I am. Do you see it? Jesus is saying, don't lose heart. I am the son of God. I am God and I've got all of this under control. And you will know that I have it under control because I'm telling you what is going to happen even before it happens. Isn't it wonderful how Jesus says these words in verse 18? This betrayal is actually something that has been preordained hundreds and hundreds of years before. See it? He who shared, and Jesus said, I know those I have chosen, but this is to fulfill the passage of Scripture from Psalm 41. He who shared my bread has turned against me. Uh, and even better, if you look at the other Gospels and you follow the story of the betrayal and how G uh, Judas leaves at night. By the way, did you notice that this is the last night of Judas' life? The man who betrayed Jesus will get his 30 pieces of silver the price you pay for a slave. He'll be overcome with remorse or guilt or whatever it is. He will throw it back and then he'll go hang himself on a tree. The branch will break and he'll be splattered on the ground. Even that as recorded in the book of Zechariah, chapter 11, hundreds of years before the event. See that? In this deep personal betrayal, Jesus is saying to his disciples, I knew, I knew, I knew. I knew. Don't lose heart. And when it happens, you will know who I am. That's why Jesus can say to his disciples, in the midst of any form of betrayal, keep your eyes firmly fixed on Jesus and do the work he has called you to do. See it? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit into the passage unless that's what Jesus is teaching his disciples. The trail is hard, but don't lose heart. I've got this. The trail is hard, but don't stick your head in the sand and lose focus and direction. Verse 20, very truly I tell you, 
whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. In the midst of a betrayal, Jesus is realigning the focus of the disciples and saying to them, no matter what's going on, just keep going. Just keep proclaiming the gospel. Just keep telling people the good news. Because that's what I've called you to do. Isn't it remarkable in God's kindness that in the life of the church, whenever the church is threatened by betrayal, everybody points the finger at the church. Everybody in the world calls us hypocrites. Everybody thinks that that will be the death of church and Christianity. And Jesus says, no, it won't be. Because I've taught my disciples well. I've got this. I'm in control. I am sending you. Just keep talking about Jesus. And as you keep talking about Jesus, those who will accept you, accept me. Those who accept me, accept my Heavenly Father. Isn't that great? And Jesus goes to the cross. And what does he do at the cross? He dies for betrayers. Is that amazing? That if you are sitting here this morning and you identify as someone who is a betrayer, if you identify that you are someone who's broken others closest, dearest to you, you've broken their trust. The beauty of the gospel is that you can be forgiven. All you have to do is put your faith and trust in Jesus. And if you're someone sitting here this morning and your trust has been broken, don't lose heart. God knows everything about you. God knows everything that is going on in your life. And he is trustworthy. His son trusted him with his life. And after three days, he was raised from the dead. Remember that great story in Genesis with Joseph and his brothers? What you meant for evil, God meant for good. Whatever you're enduring, however your trust has been broken, God is faithful. Don't break trust with him. And just keep going out there and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with the world. For that's what people need. People need for their relationship with God to be restored and the only way it gets restored, the only way that broken trust is restored is through faith in Jesus. And that's the ministry that God has called every single one of us in this room to. You keep trusting in God and you keep speaking the gospel no matter what's going on. Let me pray.
Heavenly Father, on so many levels, we thank you for John's record of that upper room discourse. We thank you for allowing us to see the intimate details of what was going on in that upper room. We thank you we got to see your heart and your concern and your troubled spirit at betrayal. And yet we got to see your love and your heart for your disciples. How you encourage them to keep going on. How you encourage them to see who you truly are. And that you are in control and you know all things. Fathers, we struggle with the ups and downs of life. And particularly when we are confronted by betrayal from those nearest, dearest, closest to us. Please may we turn to you and find our refuge, our strength, our comfort, our rest. And through the power of your spirit, will you enable us to go on? Will you enable us to keep speaking the truth about your son, Jesus? And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.